Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm4975 and today we are taking the Ford GT70 down our rally track. <laughs> So in the last episode we had the Pontiac Firebird, our first rear wheel drive car, go down the rally course and today I want to continue with the rear wheel drive theme and I've gone for something that is rear engined. I'm hoping the engine placement over the rear wheels is going to give us a bit more traction and I've gone for something that was actually designed as a rally car back in the day and it is the Ford GT70. Now this little car is very obscure looking and people are kind of on the fence whether they like it or not. Personally I'm not a huge fan, it doesn't look terrible, but I'm hoping it's going to do very very well on our rally course. But let's go ahead and upgrade the thing. If you haven't seen any of these episodes so far, we're upgrading all the cars to S1 class. Now we'll be keeping the stock engine if it allows us with the PI. Considering that the GT70 starts off in B class, I think we're going to need an engine swap, but I will do the stock engine first. The stock drivetrain, we're also going to be keeping in the car. We could swap it to all-wheel drive, but as per the rules of the series, we have to leave the vehicles with their stock drivetrain. Now, we can go ahead and fit a turbo or a supercharger. I'm going to fit a turbo. I think that's a good shout. We've got a few aero parts, just some Forza aero, which I am going to put on the vehicle. It gives us a bit more traction. It also gives us some more PI. Now, all the vehicles in this series are going to be fitted with the off-road tyre compound, the rally tyres, unless they can only have the off-road tyre compound. Now, this is to give the cars some grip on the road, because the first part of the course, as you'll see, is road. The rest of the course is all off-road, but many of the uh, the dirt series you will do in Horizon 5 are half tarmac and half dirt, so this is to give you a better representation. Now, I'm upgrading most of the things here, and I see we're already into A-class, so we might actually be able to use the stock engine. We'll have to wait and see. All the vehicles are going to be fitted with the rally or off-road diff if they can't have the rally diff. All the vehicles are also going to be running the off-road springs and dampers. I'm going to put in full roll bars. Now the vehicles will have as much weight reduced as possible if the PI allows it. Um, we can get away with full weight reduction. Just over a ton in weight. Uh, 1,500 pounds. So not too bad to consider in. Then we get into the engine upgrades. I'm going to go ahead and slap on all the top upgrades. And let's see if we could actually get this thing to S1 class. Okay, there we are into S1 class. The car, in case you're wondering, does sound a little bit weak. Obviously, if you change the exhaust, it does actually change the exhaust note now, which is really nice. I'm glad that they added that. Now, we're about halfway through S1 class here, which is not terrible. Um, I will show you the statistics. With the stock engine and the turbo, you get 530 horsepower, 375 pound-feet of torque. The thing weighs 1,600 pounds. And it has a 2.3 litre engine in once upgraded. So not too terrible, um, but we're not at the top of S1 class. So we are going to have to do an engine swap. A lot of the vehicles we've run so far have had engine swaps. And debating which uh, engine to go for, I think the Turbo Rally, the inline four Turbo Rally, I think is going to be our best shout. It is almost into S1 class already. Um, if we upgrade this thing, let's see what kind of PI we can get out of it. 861. Still not quite the top of S1 class. Uh, we do have the 2 litre inline 4 turbo. 
we could try that. Um, we also have the 3.2 liter straight six. Um, I'm just debating what to do. I think we're going to stick with the turbo rally. I think it's going to, I think it's going to give us the most PI. Um, and this is also kind of, uh, in my opinion, what I think the best engine for the vehicle will be. It's close enough to the top of S1 class for me to be happy with it. Now, with all the upgrades and this engine, we have 668 horsepower. So roughly half what we had in the Pontiac in the last episode. We have 682 pound-feet of torque. The thing now weighs 1,581 pounds and it has a 2-litre engine with the turbo. So not too bad. The thing is rear engine, rear wheel drive. I'm curious to see how this does down our track. So I'm going to go and tune and paint the thing and I will see you in a minute. Okay, here we go for our first run in the GT70. The thing is already struggling for grip not great we are on those dirt tires on the road section though but now when we transfer to the dirt i'm hoping those tires are going to be better this thing has good turn in which is actually nice to see but because the thing is so light i am going to have to feather the throttle a little bit at this point i have three attempts to beat the podium times to place this thing higher up the leaderboard but I think the first run is just going to be seeing how much power I can actually put down with the amount of traction we have and what I'm learning is half throttle is about where we want it I feel like this is doing better than the Pontiac did in the last episode we're not spinning the tires quite as much I'm keeping it in quite high gear though just to try and control it. Coming up to the hairpin corner now, this is where we had a spin out in the Pontiac. So let's see how the Ford deals with this. Almost a spin out, but a little bit more controllable. We are just spinning those tires down the entire course. The Ford though, soaking up the bumps quite nicely, get it turned in for the two right-handers and then up the hill. This is where we can actually pick up a bit of speed, the tyres aren't spinning as much because we're travelling uphill. Then we press the hill and it's a shallow left-hander but you do have to get it slowed down for that corner. We're coming up to probably my worst corner on the course, I don't think I've got this corner right so far in the series. So I'm just going to slow it way down. It's a very deceptive corner that you think you can carry a lot of speed, but then it bites you in the arse. But then we're coming up to the last couple of corners here. A little bit of a slide from the GT there, but nothing terrible. The feel, the feel of this car is pretty good. It feels very controllable. Heading on down the hill and across the line. There we go. I believe we have beaten the Pontiac's time there. Yes, we have. The Pontiac put down a 2.23. The GT70 a 2.22. But I feel like there is some room for improvement there. I was wide on a few corners. Uh, I could have been braver in places. So let's go for another run and see what we can do. Okay, here we go for round number two in the Martini Racing Ford GT70. I've learned that we can't go full power on the road, so I'm just going to maintain the speed for the off-road sections. It was a much better launch off the line this time. Now, the GT70 being quite low slung does struggle a little bit with the water sections. I didn't get it turned in there quite as nice as I wanted to. The wheels did lock up. Now, the thing being so light as well, it struggles to put the power down. It doesn't quite have enough weight to force those wheels down. And with it being so low slung, as I said, through the water section there, it is a little bit of a struggle, but nothing too serious, nothing we can't deal with. I'm going to try and be a little braver on this run. We still have another run to go if this one goes wrong. So not too worried at this point. I'd like to beat the previous time of 2 minutes 22 if possible. 
I'm going to try my very best to do that. I am running this with anti-lock brakes turned off, no stability or traction control, and I'm running this with a manual gearbox. So I am doing the gear changes myself, and on a rally car such as this, that is essential. The GT soaking up the bumps quite nicely though on that section, I have to say. There's much of a sports car looking vehicle this is, it actually soaks up those bumps quite nicely. Now, the GT70, for those who don't know, was actually designed as a rally car back in the 1960s, I believe. Possibly 70s. And uh, I can see its uh, pedigree coming through here. Ford obviously has a good pedigree of rally cars and racing in general, to be honest. The name stolen from the GT40, famous Le Mans car, and that's when Ford decided that they should actually tackle rally racing. So they built the GT70, it was not a very successful car, but it is in Forza and it is doing pretty well here. I think we're going to beat our previous lap time, yes we did, that was a 2 minute 20 something. 2 minutes 20.908 but I think there is still a few seconds to be shaved off there. The Audi Quattro did a 2.15. I would like to hope this car could beat that. I don't think we're going to see it unfortunately but we have one more run. Let's see what we can do. Okay, attempt number three. Here we go. Let's see what we can do. Now for those watching at home, I am commentating this live whilst driving. So in this run, if I am a little bit quiet, I am going to try my best to focus and put down a good lap time for you all. I'm going to get it stopped early for that corner this time. Don't want to overrun. Just going to feather that throttle nicely through there. That was much cleaner than the previous run. Getting it slowed down for our third water section here. This is where you don't want too much throttle. You can spin out in that water very easily. The wheel's spinning all the way up the hill here. Finally got some traction towards the top, but then we need to get it slowed down with a right-hander. A little drift on the exit, a little bit on the grass, but nothing too serious. Now this corner here, you can get the back end out, which we do. That was absolutely beautiful. Let's see what we can do on this straight section now. We might be able to get a little bit of speed up. This is usually quite a bumpy section, but again, the Ford GT70 soaking it up absolutely beautifully. This is a very clean run. We're just going to not mess up the hairpin, which we don't. It's a very clean top corner through there. Onto the next straight section, and then into the two right-handers. I'm going to slow it down early for those. We get it turned in nicely, possibly a little bit of understeer, but nothing terrible. Up the hill now, let's see what we can do here. We're getting a lot more speed on this run, I feel like this is going to be the one. It's a lot cleaner, if anything. Now we're coming up to the deceptive corner, let's make sure we get it right. We don't want to overshoot this one, I'm going to slow it down early. We've got a good run going here, let's keep it nice and clean. Then we come on to the final two corners. I am very, very pumped about this run. I feel like this is going to be the one. Let's not throw away my chances by uh, curse of the commentator there. Coming into the final corner. A little bit of a drift. I'm going to put the power down down the hill. Let's not spin out. And there we go. That was our fastest time so far in the GT70. A 218.5. 472 that will be the time going on our leaderboard well there we have it guys the leaderboard let's have a look at it we've got the Lamborghini LM002 with a 205 at the top there unfortunately our little GT70 could not knock that beast off the top of the leaderboard but it's there in fourth place above the Pontiac it was uh, five seconds faster than the Pontiac we ran in the last episode. So my predictions of this thing being faster were correct. I was hoping it would be faster than the Pontiac. Sadly, it could not quite meet, meet the, uh, the Quattro in the first episode. But 
I think if you ran this thing against the Quattro in a sort of head-to-head, -head, then the GT70 could pull away in the straights. This thing had a lot of speed going in the straights. But that last run, I was really, really pumped about that. It had the adrenaline going. This thing actually has got under my skin. With this Martini Racing look, I think this thing is beautiful. But unfortunately, it just does not quite have the enough speed to match those faster vehicles. So it's a fourth place for the GT70, but in the coming weeks, I think we'll find that is a pretty fast lap time. And hopefully next week, we're going to have something a little bit different for you. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you did enjoy. It'd be awesome if you could smash the like button if you did. And subscribe if you're new around here. We do these races every single week. So if you want to see more, then make sure you turn on those notifications. And I will see you all in the next episode.